right, Psalm 121. This is what it says. It says, I lift up my eyes. Everyone shout, lift up. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Everyone shout amen. amen. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. He says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I want to talk to you this morning from a message I'm going to entitle, Lift Up Your Eyes. One more time, everyone will say, lift up. Yeah. You know, there are times that you need to shift your gaze uh, to, to get a different perspective. You need to uh, shift what you're looking at, what you're focused on uh, in order to kind of have a new perspective in life and a new mentality. I don't know if you've ever been in a moment like that, but in all of our lives, we can get fixated on certain things. You can get fixated on the three things going wrong and miss the hundred things going right. You can get fixated. Why is it that, you know, you might have had the best week, had the best weather, and then you're still thinking about that one usher that didn't smile at you on the way in or someone that stole that parking lot, you know, from you on the, on the street as you were trying to park, and then you sat in church and realized they're sitting right next to you, and now you can't worship, and it's just a crisis, a spiritual crisis. There are, there are moments we need to shift our attention. Uh, and, and if we don't shift our attention, you, you can just spiral. And, and the psalmist talks about this. He goes, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. I remember many years ago, I have four kids, and uh, my, my third son, uh, he was young. He was about three years old, I think. Actually younger. I think he was about two. And I was preparing a sermon on Saturday. I was the youth pastor in our church at the time for about 15 years. We youth pastored. And, uh, and, and so I was getting ready for Saturday night. Our youth was on Saturday night. And I, I just had tried to get this sermon together all week. It wasn't really flowing. I had all these thoughts, and it just didn't really make sense. And I, I was sitting there praying, working, studying. I wish I was as smart as your pastor, but I'm not. And I didn't know how to put together this thing. And, and I was trying to figure it out. And in the middle of prep, uh, I felt the Lord speak to me all of a sudden. And, and God said, go home, be with your family. And I was like... Lord, I don't know if you remember, but I have a service in a couple hours, and I was kind of hoping you would be there, you know, and uh, with me. I need a sermon. There's young people coming, and uh, no, go home, be with your family. I'd never really heard anything like that in the middle of prep for a service. I thought my service was the most important thing on earth in that moment, as most pastors do, and and God just kept saying this, go home, be with your family. Okay, so I packed up my notes. I went home, and uh, we live in an apartment block in Singapore, and below the, the block, there was like a little playground. And my wife and my third son were at the playground, which they're usually not. So I thought, okay, interesting. So I sat down, and we just said hi, talked. And less than five minutes I'd been there, we heard this scream come from within the playground equipment. And it wasn't like a fake scream, like someone stole my toy or I want more candy. It was like the real, like, I'm in pain kind of cry from my son. We rush over, and there's blood, like, everywhere. He'd fallen down. I don't know how he did it. We still don't know. He hit his face somehow, and he, he really, like, bit through his lip. There's, like, a hole in his lip. It was disgusting. And there's like blood. He, he runs to my wife. I, he do, if you're a dad, you know in crisis, you don't count. Your kids don't care about They just need their mom. He runs to the mom. I'm there like, huh, huh. like I look like, you know when you go to help your friends move furniture, but you don't want to do anything, and you're like <laughs> kind of, do you, do you got it? You, okay, yeah, you're good. Okay. And I'm standing there like not sure, I, I'm awkward. Finally, I'm like, maybe I should just, I'll just take a selfie, I guess, with my son. My son's bleeding out, and I'm like, I thought maybe I'll need to post on Instagram a, a testimony for the miracle later or something. So I took a photo, and I, I, I kind of stayed a little bit away. I'm not really good with blood. I don't do blood and cockroaches. I can do church planning. I can, you know, we'll cast out demons. We're okay with that. Spiders, that's fine. But blood and cockroaches, we don't do. So I, I, I was like, look, babe, you've got this kind. And so we rushed to the clinic. It was pretty bad. 
Uh, in fact, when we got to the clinic, the doctor didn't even want to look at him, like took one look at my son, and she just goes, oh, take him to the emergency room. And you know it's kind of bad when the doctor won't look at the wound. Like, that's not great. Uh, and so we're, we're sitting there waiting to see the doctor, and I don't know what to do. I'm kind of bored. And so I, I thought, I wonder how that photo turned out. And so I open my phone. I, I start scrolling. I flip it. I open it up. I see the blood. And I feel all the blood drain out of my body. And I'm sitting here. My wife goes, what's wrong? I'm like white as a sheet. And I'm like, babe, I don't feel good. She goes, what are you talking about? I'm like, I think I need a doctor. <laughs> like, I'm here for my son. I'm going down right now. Like, call the nurses. And I feel like I'm such an idiot. Like, and I, I feel like horrible. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm putting my head between my legs. Like, whoo, whoo, whoo. I look like I'm giving birth, like, in the emergency room. And she's like, what is wrong with you? You know, you're the man. You're supposed to hold it together. I'm like, this is why God gave us four C-sections and no natural. He knew I would never make it through a natural birth. I would have passed out. Like, so, so here I am, and I'm like, I got to look away. I can't look at this thing. I can't look at the photo. I can't look at my, my son's face. I, I just, if I keep staring at this thing, if I don't shift my perspective, I'm going to be in a real crisis point in my life. And the, the psalmist is talking about a moment kind of like that. I lift up my eyes. It, it is literally a redirecting of the gaze, a redirecting of what I'm looking at, a redirecting of thoughts. And actually, if you think about this scripture and you study it, it actually refers to the redirecting of a petition or prayer. Uh, the Bible talks a lot about not lifting up your eyes to an idol. What's it talking about? Not, not looking to those things for help. Not, not seeking the attention of those things, but making God the source of my strength. God the source of my hope. And so when he says, I lift up my eyes, he's not just talking about I'm looking around at scenery. He's talking about a very intentional shift of my focus, my thoughts, and even my prayer and petition. I, I don't know a lot about Perth, but I know enough about people to know there's a lot of reasons even here to stay focused on things below, but God wants to come and lift us up. There are a lot of times that we focus on the wrong things, and how many know the things that get our attention don't always deserve our attention? You can spend your whole week thinking about one conversation you had at school or in the office or at some business place where someone was rude to you and you're still thinking about the comeback you should have said. If I see him again, I'm, no, you're not. Stop being passive aggressive. You're never going to say it, you know? And, and the things, why am I consumed with that? Why do I get consumed with something that happened to me before? What's going on when I know, man, God's good. I know he has good plans for me. There's so many things I could focus on, but the things that get my attention don't always deserve my attention. And so he goes, you know what? I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. He starts to talk about this and expound on the goodness of God, the help of God, the strength of God, and he's talking about what he's going to focus on. Psalm 120 to 134 are what is known in the Bible as the Psalms of Ascent, the Psalms of Ascent. And, and basically, these psalms are a collection of passages that were sung and recited when they would go to Jerusalem to the temple to worship at the festivals that Israel would have. And so on their way, and on their way even up to the temple mount as they were ascending to the temple, they would recite these psalms and imagine they're leaving their normal life. So at home... They've got maybe some issues. There's shepherds. Maybe the sheep is sick. Maybe it's been a bad year. Maybe the harvest hasn't been great. But on the way to the temple, they start going, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He won't let my foot slip. He'll be my shade. He's not going to let the sun harm me. He's going to be my help. And they recite this. And, recite, and as they moved up, something would happen in their heart, and they would be prepared to meet with the Lord there. You know, we did this this morning in worship. You realize that what, this is not Christian karaoke. Okay. That we, it's not like we just don't know what to do, so we sing Kumbaya. We, we're, we're, 
How, how many know not everybody in this place had a great week? Not all of us came ready and thinking, man, I can't wait to worship God. But as we worship and as you say, you know what? I, I throw up my hands. I, I say, God, hallelujah to your name. Lord, you are the one that saved me. God, you pulled me out of that grave. And suddenly my perspective begins to shift. Suddenly my heart comes alive. It's not just emotionalism. It's not just hype. There's something that happens as I choose to redirect my gaze. And, and, and in the scripture, they would use this to set their focus, redirect their perspective. You know, I think today, right here in Sun Life Church, that if we would lift up our eyes to the Lord this morning, I think we would receive a heavenly perspective, a fresh level of faith, and even some clarity for the future, but we've got to choose to have the right perspective. Are you with me today? Come on, are you with me today? Now, I want to give you, I want to give, break this down, give you four things, four perspectives that he's talking about in this psalm. When he says, I lift up my eyes, what is he talking about? What kind of perspective is he describing, and what should we have? The first is this. He's talking about having a perspective of faith. I need to have a perspective of faith. Everyone shout faith. faith. Say it like you're about to launch a second service in the heart of Perth. Come on, everyone shout faith. faith. Whew, say it like you're about to get a flat white from the cafe outside. And, you have, and it's only if you say the word faith, they will give you a free flat white. Come on. Faith. Oh, my gosh. I knew. I knew. It. I got it. I got it. I figured out the key to this city. A perspective of faith. I, I need, listen, I need a perspective of faith to see what God is giving me. I need to see what God is giving me. He says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. He goes, I see it. Help is on the way. My God is going to help me. I can see it by faith. My help comes from the Lord. God has called us to faith. And, and you know what? There is a battle so many times for our attention in life. I, I don't know if you have kids, but you've probably been around kids. With my kids, I got four, and I am always fighting for their attention. And it's like my, I have a five-year-old, and I could be trying to give him $1,000. It doesn't matter. He's busy playing with Paw Patrols, jumping around. He's, he, he's got, eight, I don't think it's ADD. It's like ADD, D, 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 D. Like, I can't get his attention. Luke, Luke, look at me. Look, at, I'm always trying to get him. Look at me. I need to talk to you. Luke, what? What, Dad? What? What do you need? What do you need? Stop. Stop moving. Okay, I'm, I'm not moving. Yes, you are. You're moving right now. <laughs> like, just calm down and look at me. And I think sometimes God might feel the same way about us. Hey, I want to speak to you. And we're just busy and looking and moving. And, doing, you know, hey, hey, give me, give me your attention. Have you ever wondered? Maybe some of those crises are just a moment for you to give your attention back to God. Maybe some of those struggles, just a moment, like, hey, could, God can handle the crisis. God can handle your life. But does he have your attention? Does he have my attention? And, and God wants us to have a perspective of faith to understand what, what is faith. Faith is actually seeing that God has more for us. At its very basis, faith is knowing there's more. I, I'm saved by faith. I see this world. I see my life. I see my sin. But faith is, God, you have more than just what I see. You, you have forgiveness for me. you got a relationship with God for me. God, you, there's another life that I can live. I put my faith in you. But now in my walk with God, faith, every day believing, Lord, I haven't experienced the fullness of you. There's still more that I can know you. There's more that I can understand about you. There's more that I can receive from you. God, you have something for me tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Faith is seeing that God is more. And that's why he says, I lift up my eyes. Where does my help? He goes, I know there's some things right now, but God, I think there's more. I think there's help that I haven't experienced yet. Are you hearing me today? I, I think there's breakthroughs that I haven't stepped into yet. This is why you should come and pray tomorrow night, because God has more for your life and more for this church. And we pray in faith, believing, Lord, there's more. God, there's still more. There's more promises. There's more inheritance. There's more destiny. God, there's more miracles. You know what faith is? Faith sees the invisible and believes the impossible. Did you hear what I said? Faith sees the invisible and believes the impossible. The book of Hebrews eleven thirteen 13 says, 
The heroes of faith died still believing what God had promised them. They didn't receive what was promised, but they saw it from a distance and welcomed it. And they agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. They, they didn't receive it yet, but by faith they saw something in the spirit that didn't exist in the natural. Faith sees the invisible. Once upon a time, there was a couple named Ben and Tran, and they saw something in the spirit that didn't exist. Some of you didn't even know Jesus yet, but they saw, I think we could plant a church. I think some people could see Jesus, and they never saw your face, but they knew that you were coming. Come on, there, the one time there wasn't this. One time a family member was praying for you and inviting, and it, it hadn't happened yet, but they saw it, and thank God somebody saw something that was possible. Someone saw there was something that God could do in Perth. There was something God could do in your life, in your family. That is faith. Right now, we have faith. There's a second service coming. We don't know who's coming. We just see it by faith. God, I see a room full of people. I see people in community and in relationships and meeting Jesus. And God, you're going to build the church in this city, and you're going to do something. What is it? It is by faith. I see the invisible and believe the impossible. He goes, I lift up my eyes. Let us not focus on all the issues we can see, all the problems I can describe. How about we have a perspective of faith to say, God, help is on the way. Lord, you are my helper. God, I see something by faith that you can do the impossible. You might be facing an impossible situation today. Can I give you good news? Our God specializes in the impossible. It was impossible that we should be saved, yet Christ did it. Come on. Some of you, I see your face. It was very impossible for you to be saved. God did it anyway. It was impossible, come on, that, that some of these miracles should take place, that God could heal my body, that he could touch my life, that he could provide for me. God specializes in the impossible. And I think in your church and in your life, let me challenge you, let this be the greatest season of faith. Let this be the greatest season of faith, that, that we could actually br- step into a new season. God can bring a new season if we would have a fresh moment of faith. He goes, man, I, I've got issues. i got stuff, but I lift up my eyes to the mountains. I say, God, I have a perspective of faith. Help is on the way. You're my healer. You're my breakthrough. This seems impossible, but I lift up my eyes to the mountains. You are my helper, and I know help is on the way. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap of praise if you love him. Amen. All right, here we go. Number two. Uh, Number two is this, not only a perspective of faith, but secondly, it is a perspective of freedom. He's talking about a perspective of freedom that each of us should have. In other words, freedom to look up from the struggle that I'm in and not be bound by the struggle that I'm in. When I'm focused on just my struggles, I don't see clearly. And a lot of times my issues and my struggle and what I'm going through can overwhelm my life, yet there's so many things in my life that are actually going right, but that one wrong thing can overwhelm me. That one issue, that one problem, I get it, there are difficult seasons. There are hard seasons. I've I've walked through many dark times, hard times, difficult times, yet in the midst of that, there are so many things God is doing and and so many ways God's goodness is expressed in my life. And if I'm not careful, I can get focused on that one thing and let it become everything. I I remember, uh, I was just telling your pastor today, as I got ready to step in as the senior pastor of our church in 2018, uh, I'd just taken over kind of the day-to-day operations and... uh, and in, I was taken over in September, and in March, my father passed away suddenly in a car accident. He was, he's the one that planted the church, and here he was like my example in ministry, my model of ministry, and suddenly he went home to be with the Lord tragically in a car accident, unexpected, overwhelming tragedy, overwhelming situation. I don't know what to do with that. It's unthinkable. No one saw this coming. No one knew what to do. I can get overwhelmed by that, or I can stop and say, God, in the midst of that, I've got to lift up my eyes because you are my helper. You're the one that's going to help me through. You're the one that's going to help me on the other side. You helped me up till now. I've got to, where am I going to focus? Where, where am I going to focus? We, he, was, he was casting a vision for us to plant churches in Japan. Your pastor has been there and part of this uh, with Pastor Benny and some of the DNet churches. Uh, it, we, we, we were all geared up. I, was, I had 
people so excited about Japan, you wouldn't believe it. I just didn't know what we were going to do. My job was get them excited. He was going to tell us what to do. And then as a practical joke, Jesus took them to heaven and left me telling everyone, to, I don't know what to do. They're all looking at me. People would not quit their jobs. They left school. They go, we're going to Japan. And we didn't have a plan. Go, you, don't, you don't usually go to the hardest mission field on earth as your first move as senior pastor. I don't know if you know much about becoming a senior pastor, but that's usually not the first move. <laughs> like, like, let's get a big L, like as the first move. Let's take a big hit, you know? And, and I'm sitting here like, God, there's so many things going wrong. N then a small, I don't know if you heard of it, a little virus broke out shortly after that. It was called COVID-19. Just a small situation, not a big deal. I was in Japan at the time, and I remember seeing all the masks. thought, I should buy some masks and bring them home. Then I thought, ah, oh, this will just be two weeks, and it'll be over. <laughs> two years later, you know, we're still going through it. And, and, and I've got so many issues, but I've got to decide in my life, Lord, where am I going to focus? Am I going to have freedom from my struggle? I, I lift up my eyes. In other words, what he's saying is, I've got things that are going on. You don't have to lift up your eyes from good times. You lift up your eyes from the struggle. I got issues in my life. I got problems that I'm facing. Becoming a Christian doesn't mean I got no issues. It just means I have someone that helps me in my issues, and he goes, I lift up my eyes. I, I choose to actually be in a position of freedom where I can praise God, get a right perspective. I'm, I'm not dominated by these things anymore. There's actually freedom in my heart. And he's making a conscious choice. I'm going to choose to focus on this. I'm not focusing on that anymore. We have to be willing to look up from struggles sometimes and, and let God give us a new perspective and focus because my struggle can hold me back. I'd, I'd like to help at the, at the Christmas thing, Pastor, but you don't, I, I just got some stuff I'm going through and I'm dealing with, and I got, I got good news for you. Every person in this room has stuff that we're going through. Yeah. Everybody's got things they're dealing with, right? Don't let your struggle hold you back. Don't, don't, don't let it hold you back. This isn't a season to hold back. This is a season to step in. This is God, God wants to use you now, even in the midst of your struggle. God wants to do something now in the midst of what's going on in your life. Imagine this psalmist that wrote the psalm. He's got struggles and issues. He writes this thing, and even till today, we're impacted by his spirit of faith and his worship. That's amazing. This morning, you might have been going through stuff, and you chose to lift your hands, and you don't know someone around you saw you worshiping and goes, man, I need to worship like that. And even in the midst of your struggle, God can use you. Even in the midst of your pain, there's someone that you can encourage, that you can bring, that you can disciple, that you can help in the house of God. God wants to do something now. Let, let me give you a quick scripture on this. Genesis 13. Uh, this is a famous passage of scripture, but maybe you haven't thought about it this way. Verse 14 says, after Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abram, look as far as you can and see in every direction, north, south, east, west. I'm giving all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants as a, per, as a permanent possession. So he says, he says to Abram this, lift up your eyes. And look, north, south, east, west. And the context is this. He and his nephew had been living together. They're shepherds. They're the people that are taking care of the sheep, all fighting over the land. They're too big, too prosperous. And so he says, Lot, you choose where you want to go. I'll go the opposite direction. And the Bible says Lot chose the well-watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. He chose where the water was. They live in the wilderness. He chose where the wells were. He chose where the commerce was, the trade, the cities. Who was buying the sheep? Who was buying all this stuff? It was the cities. And so imagine in Abraham's mind, God gave me this land, but Abraham's now thinking, man, I guess it's not going to be as good as I thought. Come on, think, just watch me for a second. God, I believe in you. I trust you. But my expectation gets a little lower. I think it's just not going to be quite as good as what I thought it would be. I guess I won't have that place. I guess we're not going to be as prosperous. It's going to be a little harder to find water. It's going to be harder to do this. And in the midst of this struggle, God appears to Abraham and says, Abraham, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes and look north, south, east, west. Even now in the midst of this conflict and struggle, I want to give you a promise. And what is he saying to Abraham? I want to give you a new perspective. You think that land is not yours? I'm telling you, it's all yours. D did you catch this? I'm telling you, this is all, all going to belong to you. But Abraham, get out of your struggle and have a new perspective of faith. Have a new perspective of freedom. Don't let it hold you back. I'm giving you this land. I'm giving you a new perspective, and it's a perspective of 
freedom. I'm not going to be bound by those things. I'm not going to sit in those things. I'm going to walk in the freedom that God has given to me. A perspective of freedom. So here we go. A perspective of faith. Everyone say faith. Secondly, a perspective of freedom. Everyone say freedom. Freedom. Are you with me this morning? You're still alive? Now you're thinking about the flat white. All right. Uh, Number three, it is a perspective of expectation. A perspective of expectation. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And then he starts describing the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He's not going to let my foot slip. He's going to watch over me. He's my shade. He's going to watch over my life. All this is a perspective of expectation, listen, to receive a fresh vision. Expectation, what is it? I'm expecting a new perspective, a new vision, a new outlook. I lift up my eyes. I actually think, God, you're going to do a new thing in my life in this season. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something as a pastor this morning. Listen, God has something now for you in this season. Most believers would feel like God is good and things will work out someday, and that's true. But I, I want to challenge your faith a little bit that God actually has something today, not just someday. It's going to get good somehow, but I think we need faith to believe God. Actually, you want to do something today. You want to speak to me today. Listen, you came here, maybe someone bribed you to come. They told you, unlimited flat whites, if you come, just come with me to church. Maybe they tricked you into coming. They were like, you got to come to this club. They're like, why is it so early in the morning? Don't ask, just come. And then you're like, this isn't a club. It's like, I I don't care how you got here. Listen, God has something for you today. He has something for your life today. Maybe you came just out of habit and ritual, but I'm telling you this morning, God has something he would speak to you, something he would do in your heart, something he wants to move in your family in, in your life right there, in, your, in the midst of your school and your classmates. But we need a perspective of expectation that, God, you have something right now you want to do. He goes, I lift up my eyes and I see help is coming. Wow, God, you're going to help me. You're going to be my shade. You're not going to let my foot slip. God, you're actually going to get me through the things I'm dealing with right now. You're going to get me to the other side. I've got a different kind of expectation and a different kind of vision. God, you're going to bring new passion, new fire in my life. Lord, you're going to create new testimonies uh, in in my life and in my family. I mean, thank God for all the things he's done in the past. How how old has the church been? 13 years. Unbelievable. Almost as old as my kids, all right? 13 years, and yet, you know what? As much as we could talk about the journey, and I'm sure this church story is full of miracles, can I tell you right now, there's new testimonies God wants to write. There's new things that God's going to do. And as we could spend all day long rejoicing over that, and we should, but you know what I love even more? I love the new stories. I love the new testimonies. God, you're not a God of the past. You're not done. He didn't run out of miracles. He didn't run out of breakthroughs. God has something now for this season. I don't want to let the old breakthroughs rob me of the new things and just think, man, it used to be so good. God, you used to be in my life. Lord, you used to do something. He says, no, 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 I lift up my eyes. I have a new expectation that all these years God has helped me, and even now God's going to help me. All these years he's been faithful, and even now he's been faithful. Don't, don't look around and think, God, why do you have a plan for these other people and not me? No, God does have a plan for you. He does want to do something in your life. It's not someday. I believe it's right now. But I need to allow God to create new expectation in my heart. Let me give you another example from Abraham. Genesis chapter 15 says, The Lord took Abraham outside and said to him, Look up, lift up your eyes into the sky And count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you'll have. And Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. But the context is this this amazing passage that becomes the cornerstone of really most of the New Testament is based in an argument Abram's having with God, saying, God, I don't have any children. Lord, you haven't given me children, and actually I, all my stuff's going to go to my, my servant. And then, and, and then God says, no, you're going to have it. And he goes, well, let, let Ishmael, you know, have, no, 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 you're going to have a son. In fact, God doesn't spend much time even talking about Isaac. Abram, you are going to have a son, but now lift up your eyes. I want to give you an even greater expectation. And in a season when Abram's expectation actually was low, his faith was low, his expectation, God goes, I want to expand what you're believing for. 
I want to expand. Maybe you thought, man, I'm just going to just go to church and just kind of have a good year this year. And God's saying, I want you to believe you could actually be an impact in your workplace. You could impact lives around you. Maybe you thought you'd just come and attend. God's saying, I actually want you to be a leader. I want you to serve. I want you to help in that second service in the Christmas. And believe God could touch people through your life. I want you to believe for that miracle. I want you to believe for that healing. I want you to start to expect I can provide for your situation. I can open up those doors in your career. In the midst of all this, God says, I want to give you greater expectation. Look up. Count the stars. That's how many descended. You're expecting one? Come on. It's too small. Increase it. I, I want to believe, God, you can use me. You can save my family. You can change my city. You can raise leaders. You can reach nations. I, I need a perspective of expectation. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. A perspective of expectation. How many of you believe God wants to do something right now in your life and in your family? Come on, give me a wave this morning if that's you. I, I believe it with all my heart. But I've got to choose to begin to let God shift my attention a little bit. Just a shift. I think this morning is a shift like that. This morning's just a little, a little bump from the Holy Spirit saying, you know what? Like, just, just look up. Just, just look, nudge your neighbor and tell him, look up. Come on. Just, just give him a little poke. Just look up. Some of you need it because you fell asleep. Look up. I won't single you out, but I could. Here's the last one. Here's number four, and I, I want the band to come. Is what is he talking about, and, and what should we have? is a perspective of faith. Everyone say faith. faith. A perspective of freedom. Come on, shout freedom. freedom. Third, a perspective of expectation. Say ex expectation. expectation. And number four, it's a perspective of praise. It's a perspective praise. of praise. He, sa he says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? And what you notice is the whole psalm, he doesn't talk about the trouble. He doesn't talk about the struggle. He doesn't tell you about his problem. I don't know why it is in church, sometimes our prayer requests, even our testimonies, are more about the problem than sometimes they are about God. It's been 20 minutes telling you how bad my life was and five seconds telling you how, how God broke through at the end. We like people to feel sorry for us. Oh, you won't believe it. I was at, the, uh, at Aldi today, and the, the wheel on my trolley was going like this, and I, uh, my whole life's bag, and then, and then a dog came and bit me, and then I, I tried to kick him, and then a car ran over my foot, and I just I'm so, just having a bad day, and then... I asked for a flat white. They gave me a latte. I can't believe it. I'm like, why me, God? You know, we spent so much time. But you know what this guy says? He goes, he goes, I lift up my eyes. Where does my help come from? From the Lord. And then he just begins to talk about God. He won't let your foot slip. He watches over you. He's never going to slumber. He's not taking his eyes off of you. The Lord watches over you. He's your shade at your right hand. He, the sun's not going to harm you by day, the moon by night. He's going to keep you from harm. He's going to watch over your life. The Lord is going to watch over your coming and your going now and forevermore. And the language of this psalm is the language of praise and the language of worship. Can I tell you something? Praise is the perspective of heaven. In heaven, it is filled with the praise and worship of God. 24-7, they declare that God is holy, that he is good, that salvation belongs to our God, that there is no other name in heaven and earth by which men are saved but the name of Jesus. That is the perspective of heaven. And this psalm is a message that stirs us up to bring back a perspective of praise in our life because a lot of times when my perspective goes off, when my faith is low, I'm a little discouraged. The first thing that goes is my praise. The first thing that goes is my worship. And so the band's singing and blood's coming out of their ears, but I can just kind of like, yeah, all right, I'll just get through this. Just get to the message. Just come on, just get. Because I, I don't feel like I can really praise God. But he's saying, no, no, no. God, you are good. You are my help. I want to remember, God, who you are. I want a perspective of praise in my life to reclaim that shout of praise and worship, to reclaim that confidence in who God is, that there would come from my life a proclamation of how good God is. Praise isn't something that happens to you. It's something that's got to come out of your heart. It's got to come out of your mouth. You go, well, I don't, I don't know how to sing. I don't like to sing. I got good news for you. The Bible knew it. That's why it said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. God foresaw how terrible your voice would be, and he said, that's okay. Just be noisy, but be joyful as you're noisy, and God would receive it as worship. I, I don't praise God if he's worthy. I praise God because he's worthy. 
And there are moments in my life, maybe, maybe you feel like things have been shifted. Maybe, maybe you have been under attack from the enemy. But you know what? There's a moment we can have in the presence of God where I say, I, I choose to lift up my eyes today. God, I'm looking to you. God, God and today I want a new perspective in my heart. I want a new perspective in my mind, a perspective of faith. I'm not having doubt and discouragement and unbelief and wavering. God, I want faith in my heart. You are my God. You are my helper. Lord, I want a perspective of freedom. I don't want to be bound by these things. I want to be free in my heart to see you, to experience you. Lord, I want a perspective today of expectation that good things are on the way. God, you have a great plan for my life. God, you do want to speak and help me and my family. God, I want a perspective of praise. I want worship to rise up. I want from my life there to be a sound of praise and worship that would magnify you. Listen, you're going to magnify something. It better be God. You're going mag- to make something big. The issue, the problem, your dream, your plan, or is it God? And I'm going to say, I'm going to put a magnifying glass on God and say, my God is my helper. My God has never failed me. My God is the one that deserves my worship. So listen, I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know what you've been facing, but I think there's a moment today when God just wants to shift something in our life. Do you receive that this morning? I wanna invite you to stand up all over this place. Come on, wherever you are, I want you to take a moment. Would you lift your hands and can we begin to praise God? You go, why are we doing it? We lift our hands just as a sign of surrender. We lift our hands as a simple sign saying, God, you're bigger than I am. You're great, greater than I When my kids wanna be carried, they don't say anything. They just lift their hands. And when I lift my hands, I just say, God, you're greater. You're bigger. Come on, and where you're standing, I want you to begin to just declare and just ask the Lord. Just tell the Lord how great he is. Just let worship and praise come from your heart for a moment today.